shield holes. All right, I want to talk a little bit about some Star Citizen again. We're <laughs> you got a four hundred dollar ship, the Prowler. Love the design. Did a video on it. I have to say the Tavaran design knockout. Some people saying, "Oh, it looks like a mosquito." Some people saying, "No, oh, they didn't like the Prowler." But I, I really like the looks of the Prowler. But when we're talking about you know buying or pledging four hundred dollars for a ship, we don't really want the thing to be able to blow up to size one guns in under fifteen seconds. And Cam does a lot of these tests on ships. I really appreciate the work he does, where he actually goes in and he looks for these shield holes, which are. <sighs> On a lot of the ships, I think the angles of the ships, like I think the Prowler has a lot of angles and, you know, the vertices and the polygons and everything that, that's made up of, of putting this mesh on causes the shield holes. And one thing that he talks about in here, and you can see he starts to blast away at this Prowler and it's like paper mache. And I feel bad for people that put that kind of money in. And this isn't just the Prowler. This is other ships as well having issues with shield holes. I know a lot of us that have been playing for a long time are kind of frustrated with certain ships having these field, uh, these shield holes. And one of the things he suggests and, and something that he kind of caught me hit, hip to is something called signed distance field tech. Something that previously SIG had in the roadmap as being completed four out of eight. Something I talk about on Info Runners coming up on on the infra runners channel with uh seer and and execute of infra runners and we talk a little bit about this that this tech will fix a lot of the issues with shield holes giving us a more pleasurable experience when we're in combat when we're in a dog fight and the roadmap we talk about too as well though the roadmap dude it just it gives me nothing but aneurysms. I, I think I actually say that on the show. It just it, it's ridiculous. The roadmap, what, what happens on there? They really need to kind of flesh this out. I know that with everything happening in the world, you know, I get it. There's been like this downshift, but it's time to kind of gear up a little bit and get these core game features in the game. And shield holes is a big deal. Shield holes for me is a game breaker. They need to kind of fix this as soon as possible. So what is sign distance field? A sign distance field is a data structure that for each point in a given space, so they're talking about vertices on polygons, okay, uh, records how far the closest important thing is. So it's like an invisible field around the actual mesh, okay, so that you guys get an understanding. Like in layman's terms, it's an invisible field assigned to the vertices or polygons on the mesh so there's a distance that's why it's called sign distance field and this will unify one total bubble over the ship if in fact they can get this tech modified streamlined and use it on moving vertices which is i think going to be the hardest part about this because we're talking about the physics of the ship we're talking about taking this field and not assigning it towards static points but points that actually move in a 3d space so this is the thing that we're talking about with Sign distance field tech that I saw on the roadmap. They talk about it here. They uh, in the January report. You can look at it. They talk about it down here, and they don't talk about it on ships. They're talking about it on people and objects and the physics related towards these things. But they're also working on it for ships, and that's really what I'm looking forward to in terms of fixing these shield holes. They talk about it in February's report, okay? So they're talking about it, they're talking about it. Uh, you can see on the roadmap, on the old roadmap, where they talk about it. Now, I don't know, I did search for it, but with this new roadmap update, it's completely gone, as far as what I can see right now. I mean, I only kind of peruse this since they take three, since they took 3.9 and sent it back to the mill to rework it. But now in 3.10 and 3.11, which are our next subsequent patches coming up, I do not see this signed, uh, the, this signed distance field tech in the cards right now. So I think that's being pushed to 4.0. So I really think that needs to be a priority at this point. When you're talking about securing the pledge money right now 2020's trailblazer 2020 uh, they're bringing in serious cash beating 2019 okay but at the same time you also want to secure that cash as a company from pledgers by giving them ships that don't blow up right away <laughs> Ex exclusively talking about the Prowler, but it's on other ships as well, these shield holes. So it's something I wanted to get out there in the masses so that 
you guys can kind of voice up too on other channels about sign distance field tech. I want you guys to really get this in in the brain. SDF tech, okay? I want you guys to go out to other channels and talk about SDF tech. This is your homework because I think SDF tech is very important for our overall experience when we're talking about no shield holes, which would elevate the gameplay. Also, talked about flight experience this morning with Seer that I'm going to put on the channel uh, for, for, for VIPs on Saturday for the podcast. I think I talked a little bit about it in the soon-to-be appearance on, on Info Runners as well. These are these are features that I want to see listed as priorities. SDF tech, sign distance field tech. And Cam is right. Uh Cam is absolutely right. I, I, I agree with him. Dude from Germany, it seems like a really, really well informed guy. And he's absolutely right. He he's he's saying how important SDF tech is to give us a better experience. And I think it should happen sooner rather than later and yes sdf is used on more than just ships yeah it's it's kind of like a physics uh bubble if you will uh that they can assign towards other objects uh objects on you objects on on or assets on on uh other assets in the game this is not just ships but i think it's most importantly applied or or most importantly a priority for ships now to fix shield holes and i believe it was in the core tech section and i've i've looked at 3.9's core tech uh hell 3.10 doesn't even have a core tech area 3.11 does not have a core tech area and i've i've looked at 3.10 and 3.11 and 3.11's q3 so you know that's that's the next one down the road and and it seems to be removed and I'm, I'm I'm actually pretty frustrated about this type of thing. I don't think anybody should be able to, you know, put $400 in for a pledge and then get a ship, especially a drop ship, a Tavaran drop ship of all things, right? That you feel would be able to take a little damage and then see it like blow up. If you watch Cam's video, the thing blows up relatively quickly with like 70% shields left. So it literally bypasses the shields. It takes down 30% of the shields, bypasses those shields, and then he blows up the the Prowler. $400, and that's what you're getting. And that's what I'm trying to get across to you guys, and that's what I'm trying to get across to Cloud Imperium as well. It's an important message. It needs to be out there. I don't hear enough people talking about it. I think if you guys put that in the brain pan and start going to other channels that make SC content, it's really important to put down there. Like, hey, what about SDF Tech? What about it? Why? Like we need to get that. We need to get that uh, in in the uh, credo there. We really do. Yeah, four hundred dollars though. Um, uh, Ross says I think no core tech on roadmap because it's all hands on deck for server meshing and they have no idea when it will be complete. And priority also being SQ forty two, but they gotta have these things down for even SQ forty two. You know what I mean, Ross? They got to. Um, all alien ships are priced at a premium. That's true. Like, you know, Asperia is the manufacturer behind the Prowler. And one of the reasons that it is pricey is Asperia is like this high end exclusive uh, alien, uh, uh, this company that, that refashions alien ships for human use. So, like, it's exotic. I, I love Asperia. I love Drake and I love Asperia. Those are my top two favorite ship manufacturers. That's where I go to. I dig it. Alien tech, says Ross. That's great. Uh, shields don't bring us the gameplay. You know what would, though, Jammy? <laughs> Jammy's like, hey, uh, you know, I think shields is an important part to the dogfight combat experience. I think that is kind of gameplay related, Jammy. Uh, but yeah, I respect your opinion, dude. Jamie's like, no, but I will tell you even before shields flight experience. So, you know, in that respect, Jamie, I'm telling you this flight experience shields, the flight experience has to be overall better experience. I was talking about that with Seer this morning. I was telling Seer, Hey, you know, like I respect what you do. Cause he's got like expertise in the background on ships. And that's why I love Seer's content. Guy's a great guy. Good guy. Love talking with Seer this morning. And he knows his stuff. 
And I, I talked a little bit about his background and how he applies it towards uh, Star Citizen ship reviews. And it was just a really good talk I had with him. But I did say on the InfraRunner show that's coming up about how I haven't gotten too much into the technicals on some of these ships and into the PvP with some of these ships because I'm not having good flight experiences yet. And that I think I'll flip on that switch when I have a better flight experience. Um and I forgot to ask this morning. I really wanted to ask Seer this morning, like, what kind of flight experience he wants as far as, like, games he's played in the past in Star Citizen.